What is going on everybody? Tyler Brandt back here with another video and it's another draft review, a draft profile. But before, you know, I wanted to do a couple other ones, especially on some wide receivers. But let's call this an emergency draft profile. It's been a kind of a crazy week for Patriots Nation since I last spoke to you. There's been Marcus Cannon retirement rumors. There was a rumor that just came up. This week about, later in the week, about James Devlin retiring, and then the news came out that Joe Tooney's probably not coming back as a Patriot, which is to be expected. He's going to get a massive deal from a team, and it's just not in the Patriots' best interest moving forward to pay him, which is completely understandable. So with all that being said, it's time for an emergency draft profile, something that uh, it's a position basically that I didn't think would need to be addressed in the first round, but... With the questions at offensive line and now the questions at the fullback position, it's time to maybe address this need in the first round. So let's jump into another draft profile. This time we're going offensive lineman and we're going with Tristan Wirfs, the offensive lineman from Iowa. So where do we start with Tristan Wirfs? We'll start first with his size. He's 6'5", 322 pounds. The Iowa offensive lineman is very lean. He has great body composition. He's great makeup. A lot of that weight is muscle. He's got a great frame for someone his size, and with that frame, it, it helps with his lateral quickness, and that's one of the biggest pros about him is he's very good moving left to right, and he's very good at holding off some good defensive pass rushers in the Big Ten, and he also has moved from left tackle to right tackle in games for Iowa in 2019, so that lean makeup, it helps him, again, move laterally, and he's very versatile on the offensive line. Wirfs is also a high IQ player. He's very smart. He picks up on tendencies that the defense begins to kind of get comfortable with as the game goes on. Again, against Big Ten defenses as an offensive lineman, he was very, very good. And again, Iowa was a good team, and it was a part of that offensive line and helping out against some good pass rushes in the Big Ten. You know, he, he had some good games and some bad games. The Michigan game, he kind of got exposed a little bit, but... I mean, in that game specifically, Michigan's got a very different pass rush. It's not kind of imposing your will, big guys. It's more of the, we'll call them the Vipers. I think that's what Don Brown calls them for Michigan, is those speedy kind of like defensive back linebacker pass rushers, we'll call them. So that was probably his worst game to watch, and he was exposed a little bit there, which kind of will get into more on his con side. But overall... High IQ player, picks up on what the defense is trying to do, and for what it's worth, he's a weight room monster. The guy can squat a house, and he could do it pretty easily. Again, making up that lean, good body composition that's mostly muscle that goes with that side. So, a lot of good here for Tristan Wirfs, which is why he's a projected first-round pick. Now, as we talked about with Grant Del Pitt last week, not every prospect is perfect, even first-round prospects. And for Tristan Wirfs, one of the biggest problems, if there is a massive problem, is... His hands, he does have explosive hands, but they're sometimes a little tardy and they kind of get on the defensive, the, the defensive tackle late, which doesn't really help him much. And his explosiveness right on the snap is a little behind, which kind of goes along with his hands. And even, I guess, kind of going down his body, even his balance with his feet, sometimes he tends to, he tends to block with his knees over his ankles, which kind of messes up his balance a little bit. And which isn't to no fault of his own. Finally, the biggest con, but I think in New England's case as a pro, is his lack of length, really, especially his arm length and his reach, kind of makes him a fit at the guard position, which is what New England would be hoping to address in the first round. So it's kind of, in a way, like the Isaiah Wynn pick. Isaiah Wynn more predominantly played in and out for Georgia, but it seems like, at least early on, to cover up his inefficiencies, we'll call him. Tristan Wirfs could be used as an interior offensive lineman until he kind of grows into his NFL body a little more and kind of gets up to speed with NFL pass rushers. But I think he's got the skill set to play both inside and outside. If he's going to be a tackle, he's got a little bit to learn. But New England needs a guard. They can draft him right away, and they can move him into guard with his skill set. And I think he's instantly going to be a decent guard in the NFL with a very high ceiling. So, Wirf's player comparison, at least on NFL.com, they compare him to Brian Bulaga, the offensive tackle for the Green Bay Packers, a very good offensive tackle for the Green Bay Packers. Bulaga is 315 pounds, around 6'5", 
And I could see, especially with the height and weight, I could see the comparison. And if that's the case, I would definitely be happy with a piece like Brian Bulaga on the offensive line. So I'm all in on Trishan Wirfs now. I, I don't know if New England will be there again, like I kind of said at the end of the Del Pitt video, where if he's there, take him. If New England trades out, so be it. But if he's there, given the developments of the last week, I think he might be the best pick for New England to make in the first round. Finally, for this video, before I sign off for good, I just want to kind of address something I saw a lot on Twitter today, and that was with, I think it was with Evan Lazar, who's a, a beat writer up for New England, and a few fans that commented on this, and leave a, a comment below if you want to have a discussion about it, but it was the idea with Tooney probably leaving of moving Isaiah Wynn from tackle to left guard, which I saw a lot of people kind of coming at Evan Lazar about that idea, and Evan Lazar was debating back and forth with them. And I'm completely on his side. On his side, I mean, he's Isaiah Wynn was fine in his first year as an offensive tackle in the NFL. I mean, he really did a pretty good job. Was he hurt? Yes. Are the injuries a concern right now in his career? Absolutely. He's missed the majority of games he's been eligible in the NFL. But here's the thing. He played two weeks to start the season, and then he played the last eight of the season. And he was very good. I mean, he was good against the Cowboys. He was good early on against the Steelers. Two teams with very good pass rushers. So I don't really understand why you would make another hole at tackle by moving him over. Maybe you do draft a tackle that's not Tristan Wirfs. Maybe, you know, an Andrew Thomas or, or something like that falls in the first round, which I doubt. But why would you create an even bigger hole? I mean, at least for New England, they have guys that may be able to come up and make a difference at the guard position, but I don't think they have anyone that can step in right away. I mean, we're going to move Isaiah Wynn over, and then you want another season of Marshall Newhouse? Really? So I just don't think it makes much sense to move him over. You're, getting, you're creating a bigger problem by moving him over than you would be by leaving him alone. So again, if you disagree with it, I'd be happy to debate in the comments with you, but it just doesn't make much sense to me. I heard someone say that he would get injured less as a guard. I don't necessarily agree with that. If you get injured, you get injured. And if he's going to have an injury-riddled career, he's going to have an injury-riddled career. That's just the, the front back of it. But it just doesn't make sense to make a hole at tackle by filling the guard spot. It, I don't know. The logic makes no sense to me. But again, if you want to sound off, let me know in the comments below. I'll, I'll be happy to talk about it. But that was kind of... I saw that this week. Some Patriot news, and I thought, you know, let's kind of draft profile and offensive lineman because now all of a sudden it makes sense for New England, New England to take one in the first round. Will they? Who knows? They might trade back. It's something that I don't think is off the table. I might do in a later mock. But that's going to be it for this video this week. Again, follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Sound off in the comments if you want. The Tyler Brant on everything. And I'll catch you on the next video.